Welcome to TechSoup Talks. My name is Cami Griffiths, and today's webinar is Donor Management Solutions. We'd like to thank Ready Talks for sponsoring this webinar series. And I'd also like to thank presenters Nancy Kirk, Nikki Richardson, and Adriana Bittoon for taking time to put this presentation together. Before we get started, I want to tell you a little bit about TechSoup. For those of you who are new to what we do, we are working towards a time when every nonprofit and social benefit organization on the planet has the technology resources and knowledge they need to operate at their full potential. And here's a screen grab of our homepage. There's a lot of stuff going on here. I want to point out some important things for you to check out next time you're at TechSoup.org. We have a learning center full of articles, some blogs, this webinar series, there's a page specifically for our recordings there. You can go and, and view the products that we have available. We have donor partners like Microsoft, Adobe, and Symantec who donate their software that we are able to redistribute to the nonprofit and library community at a greatly discounted price. We also have a community forum where you can post your questions and have them answered, as well as a blog, a special program for libraries, and other information that people who are in the nonprofit and library community will find useful. If you haven't yet subscribed to our newsletters, please do so. On the right-hand side of our screen you'll see that you can subscribe to our weekly newsletter called By the Cup, or our monthly newsletter called The New Product Donation Alert. Now I'd like to introduce our presenters today. We have Nancy Kirk from the Tri-Faith Initiative. Nancy, can you tell us a little bit about your work and um, a little bit about yourself? The Tri-Faith Initiative is a rather unique partnership of Temple Israel, the Episcopal Diocese of Nebraska, and the American Institute of Islamic Studies and Culture. And we're planning to build a development, a neighborhood if you will, that will have a synagogue, a church, a mosque, and an interfaith center in Omaha, Nebraska. And I've been with the organization for about two years. I have probably 25 years of nonprofit management experience, and then I also owned my own business. And when I turned 60, I made a 44-year plan and <laughs> decided that I really wanted to work in the area of the changing role of religion in a pluralistic society. Wonderful. I think that's very inspiring, a 44-year plan. Like, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd like to welcome Nikki Richardson from the Legal Aid Foundation of Santa Barbara County. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Hi, good, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Nikki Richardson, and I'm the Development Director at the Legal Aid Foundation of Santa Barbara County. We provide free civil legal services to low-income individuals, victims of domestic violence, and seniors, regardless of their income, um, regardless of their income. Uh, to, in a year, we typically help between 5,000 to 6,000 people with a myriad of uh, Civil, civil services. We are basically their last resort. Uh, without us, they would not have access to civil justice. Great. Thank you for taking time to join us today. And Adriana Bittoon, can you, from the California State University of uh, Dominguez Hills, can you uh, tell us a little bit about yourself? Well, yes. I've been working for the California State University for two years, actually just one year here in Dominguez Hills. And we serve the community of students who want uh, who want to achieve a higher education degree, and what we do is we raise funds for um, to help them go to the university and achieve that dream. And I've been doing this for probably about eight years, and I'm very passionate about what I do. Wonderful. Thank you all. So we've got folks who are in the nonprofit community who have been using these tools to share their stories of how they're using it and some best practices. I'd also like to uh, say thank you to Kevin Lowe who is answering some Ready Talk related questions, my, my coworker here at TechSoup, as well as Robert Weiner who is a consultant who does a lot of work with TechSoup as well. He'll be answering some questions on the chat. And I don't have her name on here, but Allison Bliss is also from TechSoup answering uh, chat questions. Quick agenda. We will be talking first about GiftWorks, moving on to eTapestry, and then talking about DonorPerfect. We'll have about 15 minutes at the end for Q&A. So I would like to just roll right into GiftWorks. So Nancy, take it away. Okay. Now am I going to be the person who advances the slides here? Yes. Double click. Okay. Perfect. There we go. Um, GiftWorks is an interesting donor management system. They have both a software version that you actually load on one computer, or they have an online version. But the one available through TechSoup is the software version. 
And the reason we chose it, uh, we have a new organization. We don't have a huge donor base to work with. Uh, it was very inexpensive through TechSoup, and thank you very much, everybody, for that. Um, it has a very intuitive data entry system that makes it pretty simple to have volunteers work on it. And it allows you to create drop-down boxes for almost any field so you can keep your data consistent. Because if you do have multiple people using a database system, consistent data is the really important thing that you want to come out of it with. Um, a couple of the issues that it has is that it has wonderful custom fields. But if you use their pre-formatted reports, the custom fields can't be used either to um, discriminate in, in the reports, to use as a criteria for creating reports, or to come up as fields inside the reports. They have another system called SmartList where you can use all your custom fields, but the reports you get out of that don't do totals. So if you wanted, for instance, in a religious organization to uh, do a report on all your donations divided by parish, and parish is one of your custom fields, you can get a list, but you have to export it to Excel to get your totals. Um, and the other thing is the word processing function. It has wonderful word processing in that you can do all your thank you letters and prospect letters and even newsletters right in GiftWorks, but the word processing is a little bit clunky. Um, it doesn't have all the facility that you would expect if you're a regular word user. But there are workarounds for all those problems, and the mission research staff really listens to suggestions for improvements. And things that I recommended a year ago are coming out in the new 2011, not, not because I recommended them, but because a lot of people asked for them. So uh, they're very responsive in that way. We're going to look at some slides now of what the screen looks like. And this is your basic welcome screen. Um, it's pretty clean. It's fairly easy to use. If you're having a hard time reading it, you may want to use your full screen option. And Cami, can you tell everybody how to do that? It's down at the bottom of, of the screen, I believe. Um, Go can ahead. Everyone we'll send a chat message. Yeah, we'll send a chat message. Okay. Um, and it will be a little easier to read these slides because these are all screen grabs. But this is what, when you open GiftWorks, this is what it looks like. And you have options down the left to add a donor, um, look at the donor dashboard, they call it is that list of things up across the top. Um, you can customize things. The next slide is the add a donor screen. And the only thing important to know about this is that a donor can be a family or a person. Or you can have a donor with a household profile, so if you're also tracking children. Or you can have a donor with an organization profile if you get money from corporations or other kinds of organizations, foundations. To actually add a donor, you, you, know, you clicked on Add a Donor. It pops up with the name that you, you – know, with a blank to type in the name you want. Um, you click the next box, and it just takes you through a series of menus to create the information until you get to this big screen um, that now has the name of the donor, the address, the telephone number, the email. And then you save it down in the left-hand corner, and you can proceed. Later on, if you want to edit that donor, you have lots of options for different things to edit. The contact information, details about the donor. You can track relationships so you know that this is the husband or the wife or the son or daughter of. Um, and you can also do notes and tasks if you want to use this as kind of your outlook for 
your donor database. I think I just skipped a, a, a screen here. Um, if you want to find a donor who's already in your database, down in the lower left, you just type in the name or part of a name, and everyone with that name or part of a name pops up on your screen. You select the one you want, and you continue on with your work. There is also a menu for adding donations. So you can add a donation. You can add a pledge. Um, there are a lot of alternatives here. But if say you get a gift in and you want to record it, it pops up. And all the screens are fairly similar. It will put today's date in unless you select a different date. It will put whatever you have set as your default fund. You just put in the gift amount and the drop-down box um, that's right here. I need to get my little green arrow. This drop-down box allows you to say if it was a cash donation, a check, a Visa, um, a MasterCard, American Express, any kind of payment system that you accept. So again, you can make those, all those things into drop-down boxes so that you get consistent data. Something just happened a little faster than I expected. <laughs> um, this is a list of reports that you can pull out. And these are all standard reports that GiftWorks sets up. And this happens to be a list of donor reports, but there's a, a similar screen for donation reports. So whether you're looking to report out on donors or on donations, here's the donation reports that are the standard reports. There are lots of different options, and you can also create your own reports using what they call their smart list function. Sorry, the chat messages are covering up my little buttons to move the screen along. Uh, this went one too far. I apologize. Here's the previous slide. Okay. Um, there's a whole settings thing where you can customize fields. You can handle all your accounting functions. It is compatible with QuickBooks, so if you set it up that way, all your donations can drop directly into QuickBooks, either with all their details or in summary form. This Security allows you to decide who's going to have access to it. Your database and maintenance allows you to do backup and all those kind of tasks. And there are a lot of other additional tools. They have a volunteers and an events uh, modules that you can buy, but there is an extra charge for them. And the only the the information they gather is brilliant, but the one drawback is that the events doesn't tie into a shopping cart right now. So you end up having to take the money in one system and the information in another system. And if, if they get those coordinated, it will be a brilliant system. Um, this is their new website. and. Uh, the website has now changed to a new name, and I just got that email this morning. The new website is now www.giftworksconnect.com. And that's how you'll access it in the future. But they have lots of resources, and they do their own webinars, and they have newsletters, and have a lot of support. Final thoughts about GiftWorks. They have a series of online videos. They have their own channel on YouTube. The videos are very good. They're short. They're to the point, And they each cover one specific aspect of GiftWorks. I've found that it was really worth taking the time to view all of them before I tried to start using the software. 
and then come back to each one when I got to that point of the software. There's also a really active GiftWorks group on LinkedIn. And so you just go in through your own LinkedIn and join the GiftWorks group. And a lot of people ask for help solving problems that they can't figure out how to do it. It's usually about those clunky word processing things or the report function. And everybody else who has figured out a solution helps them find workarounds when the program is not working the way we want it to work. But people are very generous with their help. Um, the other great thing about GiftWorks that I found is that real people answer the phone in customer service. And that's very important. One that I didn't put on the slide, and then I'm just about done here, is those of us using all these programs talked about how important it is to put in clean data. And very few of us, if we have legacy programs that we're working with, have really clean data. That's one of the reasons we're choosing a new donor management program. The one thing I found in GiftWorks, when there wasn't time to totally clean the data before I imported it into GiftWorks, is I could import the old data into custom fields, and then as I got it cleaned up in GiftWorks, I could, once we were done, we just eliminated those custom fields. So that was very helpful. And a final thing, of course, with any donor database is backup. Do another backup, backup again, and then at the end of the week, do an offsite backup so that your data is always with you. And really, Tammy, that's it for me and GiftWorks. Wonderful, Nancy. Thank you for that run through of the tool and some of this information that we have. Quite a few questions. What we're going to do is just hold those questions for the Q&A, and I'll probably just ask a bunch of GiftWorks questions, and then I'll move on to the other speakers. So I want to make sure. sure we have enough time for all the presenters to go through their slides. So I am now going to move on to Nikki um, to talk about eTapestry. Hi. Um, so we just migrated to eTapestry less than three months ago, and um, this is a really low. You know, the, this is a pretty big screen on there. I'll just uh, I'll leave this on here, and I'll come back to this in a minute, and I'll just talk a little bit about why we chose eTapestry. Uh, uh, Legal Aid did not have a database. It was an Excel spreadsheet that had been that had existed since pretty much the early uh, the early part of the last decade, and um, it was pretty scary. There were 2,500 records in there, and we all know what can happen with just the hit of a button in Excel. They didn't have any staff that would have that had any technical, even remotely technical experience um, to to manage a database. I think that was a big part of it. And um, in my final talk, I'll, I'll elaborate a little bit on that. Um, the thing I liked because we didn't have a budget and we didn't have the culture for a database. I had to kind of bring that when I when I came to this agency. Um, eTapestry offers you the first one 500 records for free. So you know, if you have only 500 records, then you don't have to pay a fee. And with that, um, you know, oh, you buy you buy the I guess license or whatever to get the use the software. And we did that through TechSoup um, for the first year. It was sixty dollars or something like that. So it was great. Um, the email customer service is really prompt, and sometimes you just have a really quick question that does not require you spending time waiting for someone to answer the phone. Um, so I found that the email, and you can go back and forth. Once you have a live person answering your emails, you can go back and forth with them 15, 20 times if you need to. It doesn't really matter. There is a charge for um, live customer service, customer support. Um, it's, very, it's wizard based, so it's really friendly. And um, I guess those are, uh, those are the main reasons that we chose it. And I'll go, I guess I'll get into it a little bit. So this is your dashboard. This is what you see, and it's a little bit customizable. You could have it whether it be two columns or three. Um, so this is our dashboard. And over here it tells you the recently accessed records, so whomever you, know, you, you just recently looked at your donors. Then there's um, – actually it's so small I can't see what it is right now myself. But you can essentially have a lot of different information. So reports – it could also tell you, you know, reports to send to your finance director, reports to, talk to, to forward to your, your executive director, and over here, you can actually have RSS links. This is um, CNN, and you know you can have headline news kind of thing going on. So this could really be your home screen when you get into ETAP. 
Um, then these are a few of the rep most recently run reports. So there's a lot of different options that you can have over here. So um, to go right into Okay, the double click seems to be pushing me two screens ahead. Oh, double click on the slide, not on the next button. Ah, or you can okay, click once you. on next. Okay. Got it. Thank you. So here's the um, here's the add an account main main screen, and uh, so you know it's, it's the thing that I like about it is everything is right here. The country, of course, is a drop down. Everything else you type in. Uh, you can also put in the short salutation and the long salutation right here at the bottom. And um, this is a really cool feature. I've used Razor's Edge, which of course Blackboard now owns eTapestry. And I really like this feature on the side here where it says Save and. And then you have a drop down menu of options Save and Next Donor, or Save and Add Gift, Save and Search for a different donor. So you have different options right there. Um, so that's really a real. And then the other thing I really like is it has a name, which is where you put in the name. Then you have the sort name. And then you have a recognition name because sometimes you know you have we have a lot of judicial officers, of course, and we have to have the the recognition name perhaps needs to include their spouse or doesn't need to include their spouse, so whatever it is. And then you have a choice to choose whether the recognition type should be based on the constituent name or on the recognition name. And that's your choice. So that's pretty uh, neat. The other feature which I really really love is that this sidebar on, that I talked about moves when you scroll up and down the page. So you see I've scrolled towards the bottom part of the screen, but the sidebar is moving with me. So you never have to scroll back up to the top in order to go to do the next thing. Um, this is another interesting feature. It says set as quick entry default, which uh, you know, if, you, if you have a quick entry system that you want to use, then you could just use that. Um, so that's really great. Uh, the templates, it's, it's WYSIWYG. Uh, a lot of it is you know, with the, the newsletters or the thank you letters. They have a wizard base, so they're very user friendly. It's, it's pretty dummy proof. You can also use a blank template and create your own newsletter. So up here you have, you know, it could be a newsletter. You could create your events, documents like thank you letters, whatever, and then envelopes has its own category. So over here it's just basically the settings and it's, you, know, you kind of create. And then you have over here you can do the preview in Word. In um, excuse me, in PDF, Word, or in your email. Sorry, uh, moving along. Uh, this is the correspondence template. So you have sample correspondence letters already established for you, where you can just kind of drop in your corporation information or your organization information. Um, or you could start with the blank template. The blank template, again, kind of like what Nancy talked about, is a little bit clunky, but it works. And in fact, I use the blank template, and then you can just kind of drop in the merge field that you need from your, um, you know, from for whatever it is that you want to see in your letter. And you can also bring in images. So if you wanted to bring in your signature, a digital signature, so that your newsletter, your letter spits it out when you print it, then it's already on there. The only thing that I found with that is that you have to here's a view of one of our letters. So you can hear you know, all the boxed things are things that have been created that are the e tapestry merge fields that I've brought in to have in this letter. Um, the word received over here, and then the, it's a little clunky. So the, the picture doesn't show up over here, but this box down here is my signature, and it does come when you know when I when I export it out to Word, which you can do and then print out over there. Standard reports, uh, they're all the typical reports. They have the Liband and the Saiband and the things like that, which you kind of want to know. Um, you know there's not, and then you can have custom reports made, but I believe there's an extra cost with that. The next one is the help. This is um, you know, your search thing. It, it's pretty good. It, kinda, it does do the job. And there's a lot of um, there's there's a lot of support I guess with the email you know like I said with the email support they they're pretty good about that but this this has a lot of great information including screenshots of how to do the data entry if you need it uh, there's best practices there etc and then here I know that you probably can't see very well but these are videos they have that, that they recorded uh, kind of like what Nancy mentioned on YouTube eTapestry has it in its own thing it's right under your help button right here. Um, which has you know on how to do the data entry on the different areas, and I think I might have taken a screenshot of one of them just to show what the webinar looks like. Yeah, there we go. So you know you basically have someone talking, 
kind of like we are right now, talking you through how to do all the different things, which is really great if you have volunteers doing the data entry and if you want to have a consistent um, you know, look and feel to it. Uh, this is another great module that's a part of it. You can actually have a best practices manual if you do have something for your data for your um, for the people who are entering your database, entering into your database, and then you can upload it here so that you kind of create your own user guide or user manual um, for other people who log in, and then they just go right here to see how you want you know how you want it to be done. Um, so that's something that we haven't done yet because, as I mentioned, it's not even three months that we've had our database, but it's definitely something I'll be working on doing. All the reports dump into Excel, a PDF, can be emailed to you. Um, and same goes with any of the letters. They could be emailed directly to donors, which I don't like to do because I want to see what exactly the letter is looking like on the output. So I always have it emailed to me, and then if it looks good, then I'll forward it to the donor directly. Um, and then that's pretty much uh, the gist of e-tapestry. It's, it's very user-friendly. Um, that said, I do believe that you know, when, if you're doing a conversion like we were, um, you definitely need to have a point person, someone who is going to be with this database from start to finish, because it's a pretty hairy thing. Um, you know, I spent the better part of six months, of course, in between all of my other tasks to get this done, and we were not in a, in a hurry. Uh, we all know garbage in, garbage out. So you know, spend the time to clean your data and to get it scrubbed to be in the in the best place you can get it. Because the time you spend in the in the beginning will will save you the time later to clean it up. Uh, the best practice, as I already mentioned, it's important because you want to keep consistency. And you know, it's really the, with the point person. Uh, back to that, it's important that you have someone that has some knowledge of not necessarily a tech expert, but just some comfort level with navigating a database or understanding how that works because um, typically data entry tends to be left to you know, an, a, a secretary or a clerical person because it's tedious work. But there is a little bit of a skill involved with it. And if you spend the time to invest the time in the right kind of person, um, then I think that really makes a difference to the kind of output that you want, that you will get. And that's it for me. Thank you, Cami. Excellent. So lots of great questions coming in. We're capturing those and we'll save those for the um, for the for the last fifteen minutes. Now we're going to move on to Adriana who will tell us about how they're using Donor Perfect. Hey, can you all hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, well first let me say something general. If you are looking to either migrate to a new database or you're looking to create a new one from from I mean, start uh, a new database from scratch, you have to um, just understand that consistency is a key. Every system might work, but you have to be consistent every time. So with that said, let's start. Um, I was not involved in the decision making of um, getting this database, Donor Perfect. When I was hired here, they were already using it. But let me show you just uh, for a little um, history that when we started, it, we only had like 813 operations, and with the use of the database, we have grown to 2,947 just right now. So we're kind of a little bit bigger or larger than other organizations. In our database, we have some 86,000 records. Um, we have uh, staff uh, of 10 people, like 9, 10 people. So we're pretty um, larger than other organizations. But despite of that, we have been using Donor Perfect for the past three years and it has been an effective tool for us. Um, let me go to the next slide and let me show you what uh, it looks like. <laughs> Donor Perfect has a landing page like every other um, um, database. It has a top menu. Uh, with soup menus, and then you have these um, four areas, four panes that you can customize as you prefer. You could either add your user-defined reports, you could add gift listings to see what came in yesterday, or, and all that kind of stuff. And here, if you um, are using the tool properly, you can add reminders 
of things to do for the future. So for example, say you created your letter, you decided to mail to a number of people and said you want this mailing to go out in November. Then you, you set up that reminder. So whenever you log into the um, database, it will tell you that you have something to do. So that's a really cool thing because sometimes we forget or sometimes you know our agendas are really packed. So when we go back to the database, we say, oh yeah, I had to do that and I forgot. So that's a cool feature. Um, the next thing I want to show you is uh, how a record looks like. Um, you have, I think, no. Let me go to the. Hey, it's jumping. Mm. Oh, just click. Uh, double okay, click on the I, I'm there. Okay. I'm there. So okay. So this is how you look for a record. This is pretty powerful because you could either um, look by last name, first name. You could add as many information from here that you want, and the database will try to look for that information for you. You could also click a find an exact man match. Um, say for example, if you're looking for Bitun, it might bring three or four records that sound like Bitun. But if you just want that exact match, you click here and then you find that. You can also filter that by any other fields in your database. Maybe you want to see who are the Bitun's who gave just this year, or who are the Bitun's who pledged just this year. Well, you set up your filter and there you go. Um, you could also from here add an individual, add an organization, or add a gift to any donor. Um, so this is pretty easy. Then once you say um, you look for someone, um, there's my record. Um, you have, like I said, the top menu, and then you have all the information organized in different tabs. You have the main tab, you have a gift tab, pledge tab, tribute tab, contacts, blah, blah, blah. And someone was asking if you could use other applications from here. Yes, you can. You could export your data. You could look up a person in Google. You could, um, you could look up the address in Google Maps um, and some other stuff, yellow pages and that, that kind of stuff. Also, it comes with an address verification. So if you want to get the zip code plus four, um, you click there and it will give you the options of addresses that you have available for that information that you're entering. You also have the uh, flexibility to add flags to the people. Say, because we're a higher education institution, we, not, we want to know if someone is um, affiliated to a specific college or if it's or what type of alum it is. It, maybe it's a degree alum, a non-degree alum, a person with um, um, just a master's or something like that. So that's a, um, a way to segment your information. Um, let me go to the next screen and show you a little bit of the gift tab. So here this is the way we organized all the gifts. Um, and we have like date, the amount, the type of gift that we got, what account we um, we wanted it credited to, blah blah blah, and you could if you click here where it says view giving history and summary, instead of showing you every single record, it will show you a summary of the donations for that person, and you could also filter that. The next thing um, I want to show is one of the things that we encounter is that sometimes we enter people with the same last name or with the same address and, and we pack our databases with duplicates. And one of the cool things that um, DonorPerfect has is that if it recognizes a duplicate based on the, num the, you know, the name or the address, it will let you know, hey, there's a possible duplicate for the record you're trying to enter. Um, are you sure you want to enter, or maybe you just want to add on to the record? So if I said I want to add on, it might add a new address to whatever record I'm talking about. Okay. So now let's navigate to the menus that were at the top, and you have the mailings where you have the basic email. You can email a one person, or you can do the constant contact email, which is a blast to a number of um, people that you could create some sort of newsletter or something and blast that email from there. Um, maybe you have a direct mail plan. You can do it from there or you can just do a mail merge and you can have uh, several mail, mail merge templates. The 
um, application comes with some canned mail merge, but you can define yours if you don't like whatever they have. Okay, then we have the reports. Um, what we usually um, use here are the financial that will give you a summary of monies received uh, throughout the year or for a specific fund or for specific people or for a specific initiative or um, appeal. And then the listings, that's where you, um, where this information, I mean where this application lets you extract the information to Excel or other database or whatever other um, tool you're using to summarize or to check for your data or to do something else. Um, we have the tasks. And it's it's um, pretty much for the pledge reminders. And if you have EFT transactions, I think those are the payroll deductions. And the um, batch gift entry, you can do it from here. You also have the utilities you, where you can back up and restore your database, where you can do a global search on duplicates in your database and remove them, where you can do a global update. Say, for example, um, you entered all females, but you forgot to enter the prefix of MF. So that's where if you identify your records, you can do that. So if you have a little bit of technical expertise, you could use any of these tools to um, fix your data. The hosted file search, that means that you can add on, say, contact reports or maybe um, research reports to individuals, but this, this is paid, and they will host that information in their server, um, and you can have it there and link and look it up from there. You also can import. They have two import utilities. Um, they just recently launched Import2, which is very user friendly. And you could have your data in Excel format or CSV format and add on and update records or um, enter all new records if you want to do. Um, say you need a fundraiser and got 500 new donors, you can import it from there. Or you got 500 new gifts, you can import it from there. Merge and purge, it says you came across a duplicate record that the database didn't identify. Well, you can merge those records there. Um, gift history, contact report history, um, biographical history, you can do it from there. And recalculate, that is um, like an option to apply pledge payments, blah, 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 if you want to see your totals um, recal recalculated at once. Now the settings. Well, you can set up here what are your calculated fields. You can ma maintain your code, say, for example, the types of addresses, the types of constituents, all that kind of stuff. Um, what are the defaults? How do you want your database to behave? Maybe you want the pledge payments to be um, minuses. minuses. Maybe you want the pledge payments to just pay the pledge in full and don't show don't negative amounts, things like that. Um, you can create your own export templates from the fields available in the database. So you can select, pick and choose whatever you want and uh, create it in a specific format. Say, for example, we use that for our thank you letters. You can create your own filters to um, segment your data. and um, so on and so forth from here. You can create something that's really cool, which is the screen designer and the smart actions. This is pretty powerful because this lets you customize the database to your own liking. So smart actions says, for example, for every gift of $5,000, send an email to so-and-so. So if you create a smart action with that, every time a gift of, of $500 will um, trigger an email to certain people, say your board members or something like that. Also, the um, screen designer lets you add or change names of fields into the database. So you can um, track on stuff that maybe the canned um, database didn't have. Uh, we do that for prospect management and um, I'm going to show you that in the next screen. And then the help, you have the online help, the library, you have downloads, you have suggestion support, training, and a user forum where you can go and ask questions to other users and how they have done things uh, with DonorPerfect. The next screen that I'm going to show you 
is what I was talking about, customizing with the utilities. Well, we added a prospect management information, so we added these four fields to the database, and then we imp put that on their main screen. So that's where we are tracking um, prospect type, what stage they're at, who's their manager, when was the last time we contacted. So that's very specific for our fundraising purposes. With that said, I think uh, the three most challenging issues that I find with the online version of DonorPerfect are the query tool. My background is technical, and I think, um, well, I found this query tool be very basic. But if you're not technical, I think that will suffice. The pledge module, it's also a little bit complicated. It's not as intuitive, but you can work around it. In the bookkeeping and accounting, we are a higher education institution, so we have to report to the case and BSC every year. And the account doesn't have all the fields to track certain information, um, the account table. So that is a little bit challenging for us. Um, but that might not be a challenge for you. Now, in terms of customer service and support, they have three different levels. And it also, it, it's um, those levels are either paid or non-paid, which is the standard. It's non-paid. The full support, that's the one I can talk about because we have that one. And they commit to respond to you within 24 hours. Um, so they do. And then they have the premium, which is unlimited, and it's it doesn't matter what time of the day you want to contact them, they warranty to get back to you as soon as you get a question. This tool is highly customizable, but most resources have to be paid besides the standard fee. Also, the standard fee varies based on the number of records and users you have. And for general information about donor perfect services, you have this link where you can access and see. Um, basically, for one user up to 500 records, it's $39 a month. And you get a lot of the uh, features that I was talking about. And well, the recommendations that I have for any person that's going to get a new database is if you opt for, opt for an online system, you have to expect delays because a lot of people are accessing the server at the same time. You have also to create documents on how to for your organization. How do you run a report? How do you extract information? How do you track certain fields in um, certain biographical fields and things like that? Now, consistency is the rule for databases. So, um, if you're going to, if you said that you're going to track the information in that way, continue to do so because if you start moving away from what you said, then your database, it's not going to be consistent. It's not going to give you the results back that you want, and it's going to be a nightmare. So um, the database is only as good as its administrator. Okay? And then if you have any questions, I will say ask your peers. Ask other people that have been using this database um, how they did it, how um, they work around things. And a few resources that I use a lot, I have the Fund Services Organization, and that's pretty much if you have questions about how to, what, what gift, does the gift count, is it a gift or not, um, and the such. And all other resources for um, nonprofit organizations, you have, you have them there. So that's all for me. Wonderful. Thank you, Adriana. And lots Many, many, many of you have asked questions about the cost. So before I go into Q&A, I'm going to show you these slides that I put in here that has here we go, the breakdown of <coughs> pardon me, what the cost is for these tools on TechSoup. And it shows a little bit about – hold on one second. Sorry about that. So for SkiftWorks, you will expect a $25 admin fee. Normally it's $500. Your organization has to have an annual operating budget of less than 50000 50, So many of you will not qualify. And to just give you a quick overview, our donation program, the partners that give us their products also tell us who they want to give to. So that's why you may or may not be eligible for certain products. And we have a link here at the bottom where you can read more information. As for 
eTapestry, $60 admin fee, normally $1,000. Um, it doesn't list here what your budget size needs to be, but you can find information uh, about eligibility using this link. And again, you'll get a copy of this PowerPoint later this afternoon, and you should have gotten one this morning in the reminder email that I sent. And lastly, DonorPerfect, $60 to TechSoup, normally close to $1,000, $100,000 less um, annual budget, and um, up to 1,000 records, and there's more information at this link. So that should cover the questions that you had for the cost. Now, there were a lot of themes that were asked while each presenter was speaking. So what I wanted to do is first address the themes and have each um, presenter address that theme, and then we'll go into specific questions. So I'd like to start with a membership tracking. Do these different tools have a way of tracking memberships? So I'd like to start with Nancy. Can you tell us, does GiftWorks have that capability? You can set up your membership categories as a donor category, um, but it doesn't do membership separately from donors. But you can certainly run – you can have a lot of records that don't have donations attached. So if your membership is free but it's an affiliation, you just put them in your database and then uh, create a custom field to say 2010 member or something. And if it's a if it's a paid membership, you just treat it as a donation, but you put it in a under a membership campaign as opposed to a annual fund campaign or capital campaign. Okay, great. And Nikki, um, similarly, um, it's what we. Uh, the one thing that the uh, eTapestry has with the reporting is that you can break out um, dollar ranges. So we do have a membership, but we don't necessarily we manage it per se through the database. Um, you know, we again have a, uh, a unique character a field that would say members, or we a Patriot Justice Society. But then, if you wanted to break it out by the different uh, levels, and we have different names for the different levels then that report that allows you to see uh, price ranges, dollar ranges, that helps to kind of track your membership that way. But n not strictly membership, um, you know, like for a, a theater or something like that. Okay. We just and got a correction from somebody on the line saying GiftWorks does have a member field, so obviously I've never used it. <laughs> so <laughs> okay, I apologize great. if Thanks, I gave you the wrong information. And lastly, Adriana does um, – Donor Perfect have a membership option? Well, um, it doesn't have a membership module per se, but you can track that. Um, again, you can add a, a, um, a code type of in the gift. You, you have the option to, ha to track what are the gift types that you receive. So you can have a uh, – we have gift type of gift, non-gift, and membership. So the membership is just tracked there. And when we are going to report, we report in that field where it equals the value of membership. Another question that was coming through was uh, QuickBooks or their accounting software. So again, I'll start with Nancy. How does GiftWorks connect or does it connect to your accounting software? Um, you can connect it. You have to talk to both GiftWorks and uh, QuickBooks people to get them to talk to each other, but it does work. I've only done the integration with the online system uh, that I installed for another organization. We, I wish we had enough data that I had to worry about it, um, <laughs> but I haven't hooked them together on my laptop for the small organization. Okay, and uh, Nikki? Um, uh, quite honestly, I, I don't know the answer to that. I, I've been reviewing some of the chat, and I know that QuickBooks is, comp it, it is compatible, but we haven't gotten there at the moment. We're just still kind of getting everyone adapted to the idea of having a database. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And Adriana? Well, um, that's a paid resource if you want um, DonorPerfect to connect to your, to your accounting system. You have to pay for them to do that. Okay, so it is possible you just have to pay a It is more. possible. Okay, now connecting your database to your website and your donate button 
or whatever form that you're taking online donations. So Nancy, do you know, are, are you currently, do you have it connected so if someone donates, their data goes right into your database? No, we don't because we did our online donation system before we added GiftWorks, and we use Network for Good for our online donations. Um, GiftWorks does have an online module, you know, a donation module that will drop directly into GiftWorks and from there into QuickBooks. Um, they do it through Chase and Chase has to approve you, so there's a, a pretty heavy documentation requirement, um, and it takes a week or two, so you don't want to do it the week before your annual campaign. <laughs> Good to know. And Nikki? Um, again, not an area that we're using at the moment. Um, I do believe that they do have an online component, but uh, we aren't using it, so I can't really talk to it. Sorry. Okay. Adriana? Um, we don't, they have the, the, um, the ability to do that. Uh, we've been offered that option and we were considering it um, because of the flexibility of adding that uh, person, the, the gift record to that person immediately. And that's what uh, Donor Perk says. Um, unfortunately, the university decided something else and we had to go with what the university said. But they have that capability. Okay. And I believe all these tools have the ability to track relationships. But correct me if I'm wrong. So the several questions had to do, well, can I, can, I, can I track the relationship between somebody and their employer, like a corporation that they work for, or um, two people in the same household but they're different donors, or uh, siblings? So Nancy, does uh, GiftWorks um, have that ability? Yes, to all of those. The way they do the people in the same household if they are individual donors, is each one gets a donor record, but then each one has relationships inside the donor record that connect them to the other. Um, otherwise, if it's a household unit making the donation, but you want an individual record for volunteer management or events, then you make a household record and an affiliate record for each of the people in the household. Nikki? Um, same. We have the ability to have, um, you know, we're, we have a lot of law firms in our uh, donor base, so uh, individual lawyers give, but we need to be able to link it back to the law firm. So, you know, the relationship is created employer, employee, or partners, or spouses, or family members, or whatever the case may be. And Adriana? Well, um, I lost my thought. <laughs> Oh, we're talking about relationships and being able to Yeah, track. I just sort of lost my thought, my train of thought. Yes, we do, um, and it has, you can see it on the record at the very, um, at the very end, and you can track the type of relationship if it's, a, a, say, for example, spouse to spouse, spouse to child, I mean, parent to child, um, organization to employee, and the such. Well, we are out of time. I'm so sorry that we weren't able to address more of the questions. I do appreciate all of the questions that were submitted. I'm going to send you right now the link to our, uh, you should get that in the chat, link to the community forums where we have folks like Robert who is answering questions. He answers questions on the forums. There's other folks, other experts around the country that answer those questions. So if you had a very specific question, please post it there. Someone who knows the answer will get back to you and post the answer there. And here's the slide with that link on it as well. So please take advantage of that. Not only does it help you get an answer to your question, but it creates that information online for other people to benefit from as well. I want to promote a few of the webinars we've got coming up, Cloud Computing in a few weeks, uh, Why You Should Care, uh, Story of an Open Source Library for those librarians in the house. Uh, it's a really interesting story about how they've been using only open source for nearly all of their equipment and um, their, all their needs. And then we're doing Security Basics at the end of October, How to Keep Your Computer Safe, more of an entry-level basic security, Internet security webinar. So we'd like to thank ReadyTalk. This webinar is made possible by ReadyTalk, which has donated the use of their system to help TechSoup expand awareness of technology throughout the nonprofit sector. ReadyTalk helps nonprofits and libraries in the U.S. and Canada reach geographically dispersed areas and increase collaboration through their audio conferencing and web conferencing services. 
So thank you all again. Uh, one of the questions that just came in, where do I find the webinars? So if, um, if you go to the TechSoup website, on the left hand side there's a link to the Learning Center, and then you'll find a link to the webinars in the Learning Center. And you'll also, I'll send you a link to this uh, in the host event message that you will get in a few hours. So thanks everyone for attending, and thank you so much to our presenters. This is really interesting information, and I'm, I'm sure many of you had your questions answered and feel a little bit more comfortable making a decision about what donor database that you should uh, be looking into. So if you wouldn't mind taking a second to fill out our post-event survey, send any questions you have my way, and hope to see you at another webinar in the future. Have a great day everyone. Thanks Nancy and Adriana and Nikki. Thank Thanks everyone. you. Thanks bye -bye. to Tammy for organizing this. My pleasure. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye. Thank you. Please stand by.